Hello, good morning, and welcome back to So What If I Sew, or welcome if you're new. Uh, my name is Jess, and this is my channel all about sewing, dressmaking, and all things stitch related. And today, I am bringing you a video I'm extremely excited about. So I think it's been a couple of months since I made this garment for a pattern test, but I loved it so, so, so much, I really wanted to do a sew along for it. And the pattern is now live. I am, of course, talking about the Size Me Sewing VN blouse. Now, I did pattern test this back in, I think, December, around then, December, January time, and I loved it. I absolutely love it. I think it's a gorgeous, kind of timeless fit with a, with a difference. And actually, I found that I've worn it almost every week since I made it. So it's been really, I think it, I even wore it in my um, January weekend sewing. I just didn't sew what it was obviously because I couldn't, but I love it. It's honestly become one of my most worn garments and it's like super work appropriate, but also like fun and it's so comfortable. So uh, if you haven't seen it before, here's a nice picture of me wearing it. And here it is beside me. So um, apologies. The Lady McElroy Viscos I used from the Sewers Fabric Shop has frayed a little bit at the edges. So when I get my overlocker, I'm going to refinish the edges because no matter what, I did a cover stitch on it and just no matter what I do, they will not stay sealed. So um, I am going to overlock the hem on this when I get it. But here we are. So it's a sort of almost like kind of 50s or 30s, 50s vintage blouse anyway um, shape. So it's quite short on the body. And it's got three quarter length sleeves and it's got this fun frill at the front, which when you wear it, you then clip together at the top like this. And it becomes like a kind of straight out fin like that, but it sits down and sort of wiggles. And it's very, very flattering. Um, and I find that as somebody with bigger boobs, blouses can sometimes make me look a bit shelfy, but um, the pleat at the front really helps to, or the frill, I suppose. Um, really helps to sort of flatten the image a bit and yeah I really like it it looks nice on its own and it looks great tucked in to I wear a lot tucked into skirts so absolutely love this garment and I'm going to make another one and I've wanted to make another one since the second I made this one um and I'm going to make today's a little bit more exciting uh, and it's going to be made out of chiffon it's a polka dot chiffon here it is it is sheer so I'll need to wear a top under it but that's not a problem um, and it's from Rainbow Fabrics Kilburn. So there we go. You can see, completely sure. See me through it. Um, and it's a lovely lightweight fabric. Um, and honestly, the second I made this, I went, this would look incredible in chiffon. Like, absolutely incredible. Um, I'm not wearing this to film in today because it's so cold. Um, actually, underneath, I'm wearing another um, size me sewing boxy tee. But again, so cold. So, jumper time. <laughs> so, to make this, I will require obviously the pattern this lovely chiffon i think i've got like two meters of this because it wasn't originally for this top it was for something else i can't even remember now um but i will use that and today i'm also going to be using my rotary cutter and mat and i can tell you a little bit more about how i'm getting on with that how i'm finding it and um review my one specifically so look out for that also please watch the end of this sew along because if you do you shall be rewarded with a 50 percent off code for the size me sewing vm blouse um so i actually just for transparency i approached donna and said from size me sewing and said i really want to do a sew along for the vn is that okay and that's all i said is because i know people have different schedules for marketing and everything for their patterns opening weekends so i didn't want to disrupt anything so i was like do you mind and she was like oh yes absolutely feel free would you like a discount code? So yes, I would. <laughs> so all the views in this are my own. And I will also mention kind of how the pattern testing process went um, and that sort of thing, because I know you guys were interested. So apart from that, let's get going. All you need for this, it's a really lovely, simple pattern. You need your fabric, because we will make bias binding for the neckline from the fabric. There is a pattern piece for it. And the only other thing you need is fastening for the front. So this little bit here. Um, so that's the only other bit you need, actually. It's really nice and simple, and it's a very quick sew. So let's get going. Just before I cut everything out, I thought I would take you guys through a little bit. Now, excuse to say my pattern pieces, I'm about to flatten them out with books and everything so I can use them. There's a couple of bits to be aware of. So it's very, very simple. You have a sleeve, which is here. Yeah, they're in such a state, I'm so sorry. Um, and then the back is over there front is a vet now there's one pattern marking to be very very aware of i think it's more visible now 
is this bit up here and this line because that is where we create that front kind of frill down the front so make sure you do transfer this line i mean obviously you transfer all your markings because you're a good sewist but transfer all of your markings particularly this one onto your pattern piece as it will make a very big difference otherwise we have bias binding there's a nice dart in the top of the sleeve it's quite wide so again do snip that correctly or mark it however you choose to mark darts but otherwise it's a really simple construction we're using this beautiful chiffon from rainbow fabrics kilburn and honestly, I've got so much more, so I'm going to be able to make something else of it, which is quite fun. Honestly, I had to get Adam to help me lay it out, because chiffon moves with everything. It moves with the wind, it moves with me moving near it. It is a nightmare. So I will let you know how I get on with actually cutting it. My main tool for cutting it today, because I thought it'd be easier, is my beautiful rotary cutter, which is an old far one. It's a 45mm blade, and, um, and it worked really well. So I'm going to use it again. My cutting board's a bit messy, but it doesn't come off on the fabric, so it's okay. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited to use this again. I'm really impressed by it. So I'm going to get my books out, laying my pattern pieces super flat, sliding this underneath, and then we will get going. straight onto the first step and did the stay stitching so here it is on the back piece and you can already see what a big difference it makes the chiffon like it really there's so much more structure to this seam than there is here which sort of flows about so really really important step if you're using lightweight fabric i've stay stitched the front and the back here we are this is the front so it's quite a wide neckline because obviously it then folds here and gets and turned into that frill at the front so it's quite exciting um so the next step is just to sew front and back together now um i was going to do the seams normally however this is the first time i've sewn with chiffon and it is already fraying like an absolute nightmare look at this like it's really really just going so i've decided today i'm gonna have my first ever go at french seams i've never done them before but you know now is as good a time as any, and also if this continues fraying by the end of the day, I won't have a top. So let's do French seams. Now, for anyone who's not done them before, like me, um, the kind of premise is that we start the opposite way to what you'd normally start. So normally you'd go right sides together, right? Well, to start a French seam, you go wrong sides together. Now, finding the wrong side of chiffon is quite hard, but I don't know if you can tell, this is, this is the wrong side, this is the right side. You can see the colour's more intense on this side. So we go wrong sides together, so we're going to pin it down the side seam so it's wrong sides together right sides out and we're going to sew it at so it's normally a 5 8 seam allowance but actually we're going to do it at 3 8 this row round we're going to trim it down to an eighth so trim it right down and then we'll fold it back on itself this way around so that we have a lovely enclosed seam and we'll then sew it again so basically this bit will end up in so this raw edge here will end up enclosed in the main seam and then we will stitch it down so it's my first go i'm gonna have a crack at it now and then i'll show you guys when i'm done and hopefully i'll be able to like troubleshoot any issues after doing it once so let's have a go um it's definitely going to take longer than it did the first time because i didn't do french seams on my original vn however i think it's really going to be worth it with chiffon <laughs> Here we are, and it has to be said, French seams, awesome, love it. So, 
this is them. I'm very, very proud of these, actually, it has to be said. So the, that's the inside edge. So I hope this, it actually makes a lot more sense. You sort of just, it's one of those steps where you kind of have to follow the instructions without thinking about it. Because when you think about it, you get confused. So it's basically, sew it wrong sides together, turn it through, and then you sew along here. And it's really important, particularly if you're using chiffon or similar, to trim your seam allowance down after the first step because it gets rid of all of the horrible fraying bits which would otherwise stick through your main seam. And they do because I very nearly had that issue. And then you press them down, lovely and flat, and I'm just so, particularly as this is a sheer garment, I just don't want it to have any messy seams on the inside. Like, you know, maybe I need to sew more sheer things. I've never cared so much about my seam finishing in my life. So <laughs> there we go, lovely French seams. They look really pretty inside. Now the next step is for us to sew the darts in the top of the sleeves. And I'm now thinking to myself, how do I do French seams on an actual sleeve? I'm assuming it's, again, I'm assuming it's the same way. So I almost put the sleeve through the wrong way and then the right way. So I'm gonna have a go, but I'm extremely nervous about this. So we'll do the darts in the sleeves first. That closes it and gives it a nice kind of neat finish on top of the shoulder, but gives you enough room to move your arm. I'm, I'm a big fan actually of the sleeves with darts and I've never done them before this series of patterns, but I actually really like them. So let's do that. And then I'm gonna stare at them for a while and figure out how on earth you put in French seams. Um, but first of all, so it goes darts, we're gonna sew up the side of the sleeve, which I will again do with French seams. I don't know what I'm doing, this has just happened. So we're, we're living a great French seam life right now. <laughs> and then when I've figured out how to insert them with French seams, I will explain it to you guys. So here we are, I took a quick break because uh, we're in an area with uh, the South African COVID variant so people came to the door to give us COVID tests. Also it's freezing so I've had to ramp up my outfit slightly. Um, fingers crossed for some snow and not just absolutely freezing wind which is what we have right now. So anyway, um, I then went on to the next step and I closed up my sleeves with a French seam here so very proud of that, lovely. Um, and the next step is to attach the sleeve into the bodice. However, just before we do that, we want to clip off this dart here. So what you do is you just clip off the triangle, leaving about an eighth of the fabric remaining as a little seam allowance, just to make sure it doesn't like undo then and pull open. Here is one I did earlier. So um, there has been some experimenting going on that I didn't film, but I will now be able to explain. So here it is. I need to figure out how to finish off this edge so that it doesn't fray, but we'll, we'll look at that in a bit. So we have this and now we need to French seam into the shoulder. Now it's perfectly possible to do this garment without French seaming. I did that on my first VN, I just did standard seams, but with chiffon it really is a necessity. So I went ahead and figured out how to do um, French seam sleeves and I'm really quite chuffed. Here is one I did earlier. So I figured it out in the first one. Now. Donna from Size Me Sewing, in the instructions, says she does sleeves a little differently to other people and to follow her instructions. Now, it's got me thinking, I don't know how other people do sleeves, because I do them exactly the same way she does. So, her method basically consists of um, garment, wrong side out, sleeve, right side out, put the sleeve inside the garment, match the notches, sew it up. That's basically her method. That's how I've always done sleeves, because that makes sense. So let me know in the comments below if there's another way of doing sleeves that I've just missed out. Obviously, raglan, I know. But if there's another way of inserting a set sleeve that I don't know about, because I was like, I read it and I was like, what? That's, that's how everyone does seams, um, sleeves, isn't it? But apparently not. So anyway, what you do is instead of doing that, it's kind of confusing. So I'll try and explain and show you guys at the same time. So what you do is, with a French seam, you have to have wrong sides together. So instead of putting the sleeve on, like garment wrong side out, sleeve inside, obviously with the sleeve right side out, so you end up with, with this basically, and a raw edge to sew, what I actually did was put my sleeve, I just did it the opposite way around. So I put my sleeves right sides out 
back to back like that. So I don't know if you can see that's the open, so that's the open um, armhole. And here is my flat sleeve here. It's really hard with this fabric actually. So see if I can show you a bit closer. So put them side by side like that, sewed round the three eighths of a seam allowance and then did basically then followed the instructions to so put the sleeve back through and then stitched that gap close. Always remembering, of course, that you need to snip the seam allowance so it sits within that. And if you do, so if you change a 5 eighths allowance to a 3 eighths to do the first step, and then you finish with a 2 eighths, you still have the same amount gone in the seam allowance, um, but it's obviously a nice neat French seam like this. So I've probably explained that terribly. <laughs> Hopefully it does make sense though. Um, and I will do the other sleeve now. I'm gonna pin this first and do the first row of stitching, as in like on the outside, and show you guys, because I think that will be easier. Right, so you should end up with something like this, uh, which is my lovely sleeve, and you can see it's got this outside seam on it here. So, all as it should be really. We just matched the notches in exactly the same way um, and popped the sleeve on inside out. Normally this would be an, oh my God, what have I done moment? But actually we're all good because now what we're going to do is snip around these um, curves to get rid of basically most of this. We want it down to an eighth ideally. So let's do that together. So we've done that. And then what we're gonna do, so this is the clever bit, we push it back through as if, you know, we were sewing a sleeve the normal way. And then we fold over this edge like this, nice and neatly, pulling it apart. Obviously I'll go press this in a second. And then we sew along this line here with a 2 8 seam allowance to enclose that raw edge. And then voila, we have a lovely closed French seam on a sleeve. And there we go, all done. So it's actually a lot easier than you think. It's definitely more fiddly than a straight sleeve, than a straight seam, but there we are. So um, I'm going to give this a press because we are so close to finishing. So the next step is I'm going to quickly hem the sleeve ends and I'm going to do that with a fine fabrics hem as suggested by Size Me Sewing which is to sew a line of kind of basting stitching around 1.5, something like that, uh, your seam allowance, so I'll be doing 5 eighths. Um, and then basically you fold, fold again, so that that line of stitching is on the outside edge and you're basically like a little double fold. So you fold into the stitching and then fold on the stitching, so it ends up around the edge. You can always take it out afterwards, but it's a really handy measurement. And then you just get a nice light enclosed edge that won't be too heavy for any type of fabric. And we'll make sure again that these awful little fraying tails will be contained inside. So we'll do that on the cuffs. And we're also gonna just quickly do it on the hem because we don't have anything else to do with the hem. So just finish it off and then it's not kind of being annoying and staring at me. Um, and then we will be on to bias binding and our final pleat frill, which is very, very exciting indeed. We have two steps left to go and then our VM blouse will be done but here we are at this point we have a blouse and it looks like it has a cowl neck but that will be resolved with the pleat so we've got our lovely sleeves inserted the bottom is hemmed it desperately needs a press um, which we I'll just press them all at the end it's easier but now we're going to tackle bias binding so when we cut out the pattern we also cut bias binding out of the fabric like this so we get one strip of matching fabric now I always cut two um, because it's just handy to have a spare one, but it is 
you do use one you don't put them together and it goes round the neck so first of all we need to stitch this close at the end so i should mention as well i've changed my jumper again because it's so cold but actually i found the kind of sports jumpers are a lot warmer so <laughs> we're just cycling through my jumper wardrobe until i get warm enough uh, but it is like zero degrees so you know what are you gonna do so here we are with our lovely loop of bias binding so first of all we are going to attach bias binding as per the usual you know standard really now um these are fairly uniform polka dots but I haven't made any attempt to pattern match so if I do yay but if I don't I don't really care they're only polka dots um so we're gonna do that so let's pop on our bias binding and then we will be so nearly there then we're just gonna do it with the pleat at the front but I'm so excited to show you guys this and I'm actually so excited to wear this already like it looks so cute so very excited let's get this bias binding applied and then we will tackle the frill at the front So here we are at the final stage. This is so exciting. So my bias binding's on. Um, it's not as good as I would like it to be, I'll be honest. It's not quite covering the thread properly at the front. But what can you do? It's, it's a lot neater at the back. I'm beginning to think I should have done it the other way around. But it is what it is. So the nice thing about a black garment as well is you can't really tell. And as this will be frilled again can't really tell so our next job is the frill now I know I told you guys that you must mark it on your pattern pieces I tried to mark it on this and just couldn't nothing seems to sit on the chiffon so what I'm actually going to do with mine because the chiffon is sheer is lay it over the pattern piece and then pin down the necessary line that I need to sew so what we're gonna do is sew a line that not the whole length of the top like leaving this bit, leaving this bit from here to here to make this front frill so that it then will, when it sits, we'll just sit and curve, which is lovely. And then we're going to attach a hook and eye at the top on the inside to hold it together. Finally, we are on our last step, which is really exciting. So you may notice I've taken the foot off my machine. Now, again, having similar issues with marking the placement because yeah, nothing, nothing sticks. But here we are, here is my lovely frill. So when I open the blouse, there it is. And you get this sort of funnel at the top because it will then be closed by the hook and eye when we put it on and then we'll be done. So I don't know if you guys do this. This might not be a fun tip if you already know how to do this. But I use the button attaching foot and mechanism on my machine to also attach hook and eyes because my hand sewing is absolutely shocking. Like, it's so bad. So um, I'm going to do that. And, yeah, if you guys haven't done it before, then watch. Uh, if you are like, yeah, I use that all the time or, oh, my God, I have this function. Why have I never used it? You are welcome. <laughs> so first of all, you need to get the button foot, which is this one here. So it is got little prongs at the front. If I hold it up to the camera, hopefully it will focus. No, it won't. There we go. My nails are hideous, sorry. Um, and it's got these sticky bits on the bottom and this bit at the back holds the button down if it's a big button. So first of all, let's pop that on the machine. Lovely. Secondly, we need to look at our blouse and see where they're going. So if I hold, if I hold the fin, I, I call it a fin because it looks like that to me, uh, the frill out at the front, um, I know exactly where it's going, which is up here in line with the second dot. So place that under here. I'm going to put it down really carefully. I'm going to make sure my machine is on the right setting. So 73. Okay. Here we are. I have positioned, sorry, my nails are actually terrible. I positioned the hook under the button foot. And then I've made sure the distance, luckily I didn't actually have to reset the distance. Here we go. I often do it by hand, like as in hand turning the wheel on the machine. But as you can see, that's nice and secure. It's not going anywhere. So I'm going to do that for both sides and then our garment will be done. So here we are. I love it. So I'm wearing it tucked into my favourite ready to wear pencil skirt, which is from French Connection a few years ago. Um, I love it because it's like stretchy but like woven um, but I love this blouse tucked in let me untuck it so you guys can see the length so it sits this is my hip bone here 
So it's just below hip bone. It's got a really, really nice set. I love the frill at the front. I love the sleeves. Um, my one is transparent, which I think actually looks really pretty. Um, and I love it tucked in. Tucked in is also how I will primarily wear mine. However, I have started branching out with my other one, so we'll see. But I really like this as a look for work. Um, although it's not been that relevant this year, I do normally work in quite a corporate environment. Um, and obviously for events as well, I like to look nice for client show rounds, etc. So this is kind of the dream. So I'm loving it. Uh, <laughs> gonna take some photos now. Biggest challenges of this garment, in terms of actually making it, there aren't really any. I mean, it's a really simple sew. The only thing I forgot to do the first time I did it, which I've never forgotten to since, is actually remember that the marking, this marking on the pattern for the frill sits quite near a, um, like near a connection on the PDF. So I didn't realise it was a marking, but I think it's been made a lot clearer now. Um, but yeah, just remember to transfer the markings across and honestly it'll be golden in this pattern. I love the sleeve darts as well. Like, I think they give a really nice kind of fitted silhouette, but then because the bodice goes up higher, I have a bit more boob room, which is kind of the dream. So if you would like to make this pattern too, Donna from Size Me Sewing has very kindly given me a discount code to share. I was one of the pattern testers, and when I reached out to her saying I wanted to do this vlog, she's so supportive. Um, and has given this discount code for you guys to enjoy. So it's so what 50 as shown below, and you can get a discount on this pattern for yourself. Honestly, I think I'm gonna make like five more of these this year. I'm so excited to wear it to work on Monday. Now I'm gonna get some photos, have a great rest of your day, guys. If you're watching this on Sunday when I uh, finish filming, hello. Um, and let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, share, and subscribe if you wanna hear more from me. I am in fact nearly at 1K subscribers as well, which is mind-blowingly exciting. So, especially as I started this and I was like, no one's gonna watch anything I do. So if you want to see anything special for the 1K mark as well, let me know in the comments and I will attempt to do something super fun to celebrate when we get there. So thank you as always so much for watching. I'll see you next time.